Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Professor Tim Claypole from the Welsh Centre for Printing and Coating. Uh, I'm going to talk about flexographic printing for polymer electronics. Who, what is the Welsh Centre for Printing and Coating? Well, the Welsh Centre for Printing and Coating is a research centre based in the School of Engineering in Swansea University. It looks at printing as a manufacturing process. It's a centre of excellence for printing, packaging and coating. We undertake world-leading fundamental research. We underpin that with the science of the process and further back that up with a comprehensively equipped open access centre which is used for product, process and materials development. Being a university, we also do technology transfer and we also do education and training. So, what is polymer electronics? The best way to look at that is to look at the ap potential applications. These include wide area lighting, the device held uh, at the top right hand corner of the screen is a lighting tile which is being developed as a replacement for fluorescent tubes. It's based on OLED technology. The picture in the middle is a small flexible sign also based on OLED technology. This is part of our FP7 program led by the Holst Centre in Holland. Polymer electronics can also be used for smart packaging. Smart packaging is security, where you can include electronics to show tamper-proof or to actually use it for when people have taken their pills, etc. It can be used for RFID and stock control. It can also be used for sensing. Polymer electronics also has a huge uh, application in large area displays, i.e. very large televisions, the sort of things that you might put in a shopping centre. Also photovoltaics, the concept of printing very large areas so we can turn the whole of uh, buildings and open spaces into power stations. We also can print batteries as a means of storing power and print biosensors for things such as blood glucose and vitamins. Why should we print? Well, traditionally electronics is made by a subtractive process. You coat down a material and then you photochemically etch it away. This is inherently wasteful. Printing is additive. You only put the material down where you want it. So that, from that respect, it's much more environmentally friendly and less energy consumption. Printing has the advantages of being an accurate, repeatable, high-volume process. You perhaps don't realise it when you're printing packages every day, but you're actually producing very high volume, very accurately uh, and very repeatably. Printing also is a cost-effective way of doing very large areas. Silicon, the traditional, uh, traditional electronics material, is very good at very small areas and very high large numbers of elements. Polymer electronics is not as effective per unit area, but it is a lot cheaper. So where you are applying something which is of a human scale, you can print in crude semiconductors to in to add value and intelligence into, into displays. If you are going to use printing, you have to use it as a manufacturing process, not as a craft. That means you have to adopt an engineering approach to running printing processes and an engineering approach to running um, uh, to, to, to the operators who actually run the presses. You need to pay attention to detail so that you repeatably set the press up the same. Another thing which you might not think if you just bought a, a large flexo press, compared to the cost of photolithography, flexo presses are relatively cheap. So why flexo? Flexo enables you to, to print continuous features. It can print at high speed. It can achieve the resolution necessary to create uh, electronic features. It has a relatively low process cost. Because of the fact that the, the, uh, the carrier, the flexo plate, is soft, 
the actual pressure that you need to exert on a, on a uh, softer substrate is relatively low. It also means you can print onto materials such as glass. There are, however, a number of challenges to be met. One of these is the polymer image carrier. A number of the materials that are used in uh, polymer electronics are dissolved in quite aggressive solvents. Now these can react with the polymer plate. In some circumstances, you're having to match the polymer that you use in your printing plate to the solvents in the materials that you're trying to print. And they don't use a consistent solvent like you might do in a graphics ink between different functional materials. The solvent generally has a function itself inside the ink and therefore you have to match the plate and the process to the solvents used in, in the ink formulation. There is a challenge to improve resolution. We currently are printing down at 30 micron and we are getting better than 10 micron registry registration, but we should be looking to perhaps improve beyond those. There are issues to do with film thickness, i.e. maybe not enough film thickness, but in some cases trying to get down to nano layers as opposed to, to micron layers. It's a liquid deposition process, and as with all liquids, you can affect the nanoscale de deposition depending on the curing and drying of the solvents within your, your printed materials. And flexo is a complex physical process. In printing electronics, this is a shot. Uh, what, this is what you need to print electronics. This is a shot inside our laboratories. You need to be clean. The, you need to be clean in, to ensure that you have, don't have dirt getting in, um, into the inks and reducing the yield. We work with a class seven clean room a clean tent environment. Basically, we put our press inside a large plastic bubble, we pressurize it and supply filtered air, in, air into it. This can get it up to class 7, which is perfectly good for large volume, large area printing of electronics. You need to control the temperature and the humidity. A number of the inks will evaporate quite quickly and controlling the humidity and the moisture content in the ink can be quite critical to its performance. You also need a press which is rigid, i.e. one that supports the image carrier at both ends. There's been a tendency to move to overhung bearings in order to facilitate quick changes. Well, if you're printing electronics, you don't need the quick changes, but you do need the rigidity.